Hi everyone! This week, Nicki Minaj criticized the MTV VMAs, specifically tweeting that Anaconda would have received a Video of the Year nomination if she was a different kind of artist. While explicitly in later tweets she made reference to women with slimmer body types, her statement also implicitly commented on the music industry's race problem. Taylor Swift, a nominee for Video of the Year, decided to tweet back at Nicki asking her why she would say something like that. So this week I decided to do a video for Taylor Swift just sort of explaining what she was maybe missing when she tweeted that. <clears throat> okay, ready? Dear Taylor, as white people, we benefit from institutionalized racism. Even though we aren't racist on a personal level, we live in a society constructed to provide distinct advantages to white people. When I prompt you to picture America's sweetheart, I'd be willing to wager that you come up with someone white, straight, physically fit and conventionally attractive. The title of America's Sweetheart changes hands all the time, but it focuses on people who exude those core traits. The further a person drifts from the traits exuded by America's archetypal sweetheart, the more likely they are to struggle for acceptance. As feminists, we already know and understand the limitations placed on people who are not men. Which is great, but as a white, slim, conventionally attractive woman, it can be difficult to acknowledge that your physical features have provided you with an escape from certain types of criticism that people would face if they were not slim or white or conventionally attractive. That's what privilege is, a hall pass allowing certain people to evade prejudice based on the traits they were born with. But I worked so hard, you may say. I struggled for years. I wrote thousands of songs. I had reasons for those teardrops on my guitar. Taylor, acknowledging your privilege doesn't undermine the career-related work you've already done. It underscores and acknowledges all of the work you never would have had to do in the first place. Every musician has to dedicate themselves to honing their craft, and it's hard. But not every musician has to work against an unspoken status quo. On top of all this, people of color have to worry about white people borrowing from their trends, their culture, culture, and their vernacular to temporarily appear cooler and more exotic. See twerking, Kylie Jenner's lips, and even that phrase you tried to trademark, this sick beat? When a person of color twerks, it's crass and lewd and too sexual. But when a white girl does it, she's just being Miley. Taking traditionally black cultural touchstones and using them to leverage even more success for white performers, while at the same time degrading and othering the culture that came up with them in the first place, is a whole new level of oppression. So yes, you've given Nikki nothing but love and support, but the reality is she's faced twice the oppression for half the reward. White women make 77 cents on the dollar, but women of color make even less than that. 49 cents on the dollar by some estimations. So while you and I, white women, are fighting for 23 cents, some women out there are fighting for 51. And we will never understand what that feels like. Feminism should aim to free women from all kinds of oppression, not just the oppression that white women face. You can check out another video like this in the lower left hand corner and you can talk to me about this video on social channels down below or in the comment section. I will chat to you guys soon and see you guys next week. Bye.